In this example, we look at how we can use complex numbers in polar form to help us find powers of complex numbers. And we'll use the polar form Z equals R cis theta, where R is the distance of the complex number from the origin, and theta is the angle that the vector representing the complex number makes with the positive x-axis. And we can use the result that z to the power of n equals r to the n cis n theta. And this actually works not just for whole numbers, but also for fractional powers as well. But here we will concentrate on an example where we use an integer value of n, and it thus saves us a lot of time compared to what expansion of brackets in Cartesian form would have done. In particular, let's apply this result to the following case, finding 1 plus the square root of 3j to the power of 8. So that's what we're wanting to do here. And if we were to just expand it by hand in Cartesian form, we'd actually have 2 to the 8 equals 256 terms once we expanded all those brackets. And then we'd have to reduce all of that down. So clearly here, using the result we see in polar form would be an advantage. So to go from the Cartesian form, 1 plus the square root of 3 times j, to polar form, let's just quickly draw up an argand diagram. And so the real part of this number is 1. The imaginary part of it is the square root of 3. So that's going to be our number there. And there'll be an angle theta around here. Therefore, in this case, as usual, r is just the square root of 1 squared for the x component plus square root of 3 squared, in this case for the y component or the imaginary part, which gives us 2. Looking at the angle theta, it's in the first quadrant. So here we have tan theta equals the imaginary part, which is the square root of 3, divided by the real part of 1, which is just square root of 3. And since we are in the first quadrant, the inverse tan or arc tan of this will straight away give us theta, which in this case is in fact pi divided by 3. So therefore z, which was 1 plus the square root of 3 times j, can also be written 2 cis pi on 3. Now we want to find this to the power of 8. So here n is equal to 8. So therefore it's going to be 2 to the power of 8 cis of 8 times the angle pi on 3 of our original number. And working this out, therefore it's going to be 2 to the power of 8 is 256, so 256 cis 8 pi on 3. And we want to convert this back to Cartesian form now. And it's worth seeing whether we can write that 8 pi on 3 in a more simple way. And since there are 2 pi radians in a circle, if we subtract 2 pi from that, we'll get an equivalent value. So 8 pi on 3 minus 2 pi just becomes 2 pi on 3. So z to the 8 is 256 cis 2 pi on 3. How do we write that back in Cartesian form x plus yj? Well, cis of an angle is just cos of it, so cos 2 pi on 3 plus j sine of that angle, so plus j sine 2 pi on 3. And we can work that out. Cos of 2 pi on 3 is equal to negative a half. And sine of 2 pi on 3 is the square root of 3 on 2. And that part, of course, is multiplied by j in this expression. I remember z to the 8. That was our 1 plus the square root of 3 times j to the power of 8. 256 times negative a half, that will just be negative 128. And 256 times square root of 3 on 2 will just become 128 times the square root of 3. And that's still multiplied by j. So this is our final result. And so you can see that even though we had to convert to polar form and back again, 
powers of complex numbers in a case like this where it's a rather large power, power of 8 here, is actually a lot quicker by this process than simply doing it from beginning to end in Cartesian form.